Okay, thank you very much for being here as we sign into law America's Water Infrastructure Act of 2018. This important bill authorizes water infrastructure projects that benefit almost every state in the country. I want to thank every member of Congress who helped pass this crucial legislation. I especially want to thank Senators John Bosman, John Barrasso, Ben Cardin, Tom Harper. See, we have bipartisan on this one, folks. Don't be, don't be shocked. We'll probably have a lot more over the years. And Representatives Jeff Denham, Garrett Graves, Greg Harper, and Greg Walden. Thank you all very much. We appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you fellas. Appreciate Thank you. it. Thanks also to Assistant Secretary of the Army for Civil Works, R.D. James, for joining us, and to the Commanding General of the Army Corps of Engineers, Todd Semonite. Thank you very much, fellas. Appreciate it. Good job. As a candidate, I called for a great rebuilding of America's crumbling infrastructure. Today, we're taking another major step toward that goal. Very important. This bill authorizes needed funding and tools to enhance our coastal ports, reduce flood risks, restore ecosystems, upkeep our inland waterways, which are in deep, deep trouble, but they won't be for very long, upgrade our dams, hydropower, and irrigation systems, and improve drinking water treatment, storage, and delivery. With this legislation, we will also better protect American communities from hurricanes and storms. And I'm particularly proud that this legislation extends a requirement that protects and projects supported by the drinking water, state revolving fund use, construction materials, all made in the USA, which is a good thing. I love to hear that. We all love to hear that. Under this administration, we are living by two simple but very important rules, buy American and hire American. After years of rebuilding other nations, we are finally rebuilding our nation. And as far as infrastructure goes, I have a feeling that the two gentlemen on my left, two great senators, uh, they happen to be Democrats, uh, we're going to be doing a lot of infrastructure together. I really feel that you want it, and we want it. We feel very strongly about it. I think we're going to do a lot of infrastructure. This is the beginning, okay? And uh, I know how badly you want it on your side, too. So with that, uh, again, I'd like to thank you all. And uh, maybe I'll ask a few of you to say a few words. Would you like to say, John? Well, you, uh, yes, thank you, you very much, Mr. President, for your leadership on this. You called for this in the State of the Union. We have delivered in a big bipartisan way, the House and the Senate working together for infrastructure. This is a significant piece of legislation. Uh, this is good for our communities. It's good for the country. It's good for the economy, as well as good for the environment. So thanks for your leadership, Mr. President. Well, thank, thank you. you. Much. Appreciate thank it. You, Appreciate thank it you. very much. Please. Come on. Oh, no, thank you so much. Uh, this, this is not glamorous, but it really is one of the underpinnings of our economy. 40% of the agriculture products in Arkansas are exported. Most of that goes to the inland waterways and then throughout our ports and harbors. So as the President mentioned, again, this is a very bipartisan effort uh, and something that we can all be very, very proud of. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Senator, Thank you. Please. I'm Tom Carpenter, and I approve of this message. <laughs> <laughs> That's very good. I don't care if I just had a very good one. I'm from a little state, uh, Mr. President, Delaware. And uh, for us and for Delmarva, where Ben uh, and I are from, we have, we have great concerns with quality of our drinking water. And this legislation goes a long ways toward a partnership, furthering a partnership between the state and the federal government to provide uh, more clean drinking water for people to, to, uh, to, to drink. Also, we have beaches and all up and down the East Coast. Uh, we have beaches that were concerned the West Coast. Uh, we want to make sure that they, they continue to be there, they can be part of our, uh, our economy, part of our tourism industry. And the last thing, we want to make sure that our ports are getting the kind of attention that they deserve and they have the support from, from uh, the Army Corps of Engineers. <coughs> this fellow right here, Mr. President, R.D. James, the Assistant Secretary yes. for the Army, is, uh, was, has been a terrific partner as, as the General in helping to craft this legislation. People say to me all the time, back home, they say, why don't you guys work together? Why don't you work together to get something done? Well, we have, and it's uh, good stuff. Thank That's you. That's great. Thank you, Senator. Thank you. Yeah. Well, Mr. President, first, uh, let me thank uh, the leadership of our committee. Uh, the Environmental Public Works Committee worked in a very bipartisan manner to produce an extremely important bill. For the people of Maryland, this means jobs, it means cleaner water, it's good for the Chesapeake Bay, it's good for our economy, and I'm proud of our accomplishments. Thank you. Thank you very much, guys.
Please, Greg. Well, Mr. President, thank you for your support of this and to my colleagues as well at the Energy and Commerce Committee. Uh, we did a lot of work, bipartisan way, to reauthorize the Safe Drinking Water Act. First time in 20 years that's been done. This is the partnership we're all speaking about to clean up our water. So when a mom pours a glass of water for a kid, you know it's going to be safe. You also have disaster relief in here for my Klamath Basin farmers that have been through an enormous right. drought. We deeply appreciate that's that. Right. And there's hydropower streamlining for licensing so we can get clean, carbon efficient, carbon neutral hydropower in existing facilities in an expedited way. Well, and unrelated, I want to thank you, Greg, for all of the work, and I think every one of you, all of the work that you did on Right to Try. That's a very powerful thing that we signed. We're getting uh, — I have received more thank yous for Right to Try. You all know what it is. It's a phenomenal thing, and, Greg, you really headed it up. I appreciate it, man. Thank you. Please. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this certainly goes right along with the executive order that you signed on Friday, right. uh, helping us to bring more water to California. Uh, the new Water Act, uh, which is a part of this legislation, will actually have the upfront financing so we can start building Shasta, Temperance Flat, and sites, some of these big reservoirs that uh, have been uh, on the drawing board for decades now. We can finally get them done under this bill. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Great job. And we will get that done in California, what's going to happen. We're just about set from a federal level. Uh, the state has to get moving, and you'll get them moving. I know you will. Please. Thank you, Mr. President. Greg Harper from Mississippi. I just want to thank you for your continued support. This has been an emphasis of what you have been standing for, for our infrastructure, uh, and the safe drinking water is critical across the country. So uh, this is a great, uh, great step. We thank you for your support. Well, thank you very much. And I just noticed a major celebrity is in the room, Pastor Andrew Brunson. Standing next to our great Vice President. And Andrew, just come here. <laughs> stay in the country for a while. <laughs> and stay here for a while. Great. great. We really appreciate everything. You've been through a lot. And uh, we appreciate it, Andrew. Thank you very much. Thank you for all you did for us. We're very grateful. Thank you very much, Andrew. We appreciate it very much. Would you like to say something? You guys yes, I you? would, sir. I'd like to thank you and these fine gentlemen of the Congress for passing a bill that I can now use, along with General Seminite, to get the good work of this country done. We have to balance water supply, recreation, flood control, navigation, hydropower, along with many other items, sometimes out of the same reservoir. With this legislation, we're more apt to be able to do that than we were before you find it, sign it, sir. Thank you very much. Great job. And I'm going to see you later because we're talking about something on the border. We're looking at something on the border to give us a hand. And if you guys can't do it, then nobody can, right? Yes, sir. Please, would you like to say something? Sir, I think this is a great example of where uh, the entire federal government uh, has really stepped up here to be able to help take care of the people and the infrastructure. It's everybody working together. It's requirements that come from the bottom up, but it's unbelievable support from the administration and from Congress. And this is where uh, almost 99 percent, everybody bought into this particular bill. And it's what we need to do as the Corps of Engineers is to be able to have that support. So now we go down there and turn dirt, we're able to be able to put some products in the ground and be able to make uh, America uh, Plus stronger. Thank you very much. With that voice, he, he should be a politician. <laughs> <laughs> say, Whoa, that's pretty good. Thank you very much. Go ahead. Hey, Mr. President, thank you. Garrett Grace from South Louisiana. Yes. I was here two weeks ago when you signed disaster reform legislation into law, and it was major reform for how we prepare for and respond to disasters. This is a really important component because this is how we actually prepare for and make our communities resilient. There's a hundred billion dollar backlog in Corps of Engineer projects. You're a builder, and you know that you don't get stuck in the, in the studying and the do loop. This begins to cut the red tape, cut the bureaucracy, and allowing us, as the general said, to turn dirt, to make sure our ports are competitive, our ecosystems are restored, and our communities are safe. So thank you. You're right. And the Army Corps of Engineers, frankly, I say previous to Trump, the Army Corps of Engineers was a uh, wonderful people, but it was a tremendous holdup in terms of uh, the bureaucracy we had to go through, and I know we've made tremendous strides in that. Uh, sometimes we go through EPA much, much faster than the Army Corps, and the Army Corps never wanted that, but they built up artificial roadblocks that just weren't letting the things get done that we had to have done. And we have gotten rid of many of them. We're getting rid of all of them. And uh, EPA is moving very, very fast, and uh, the Army Corps is starting to move very quickly also, and I very much appreciate that. And we've got some incredible projects to go, so I very much appreciate that. We're all in, sir. Good. Thank you very much. Mike Pence, would you say something, Mike? Uh, just a word, uh, uh, Mr. President, of uh, gratitude. 
uh, to members of both political parties for putting a bill on your desk that uh, is going to strengthen the economy of this country and water quality in this country. And uh, I know your passion for infrastructure, uh, your desire that in the next Congress uh, we would focus on rebuilding America's infrastructure, and today is really a down payment on that, and we're very grateful for the bipartisan efforts to bring us to this point. Thank you, Mike. Thank you very much. Okay, this is a good one. The vote was 98 or 99? 99, 99 to 1. 99 in the Senate. 99 to 1. I would say that's bipartisan. I won't tell you who the one was, but, <laughs> but that is uh, very bipartisan. So, hey, let me give you guys — we don't do this much. Come here. Fantastic. Thank you, folks. We'll do a lot of them. We'll do a lot. I think we're going to do a lot more as time goes by. Okay. This is so thick I won't bother holding it up. You've seen me hold it up before. Uh, I think maybe what I should do, I th unless somebody disagrees, I think I'll give this pen to Pastor Brunson. That's right. Right? That's Where's that's Pastor Brunson, please? That's Pastor. On behalf of all of us, and for all you've been through, it's actually a very important pen because it's a very important water bill. And you know where water comes from, ultimately, right? Well, God has blessed us with many natural resources as a country, and we need to be grateful to Him. And as long as we're seeking Him, He will continue to provide for us. That's fantastic. Thank you very much. Thank you, Andrew. Thank, Thank you, Andrew. you, sir. Thank you. And what we'll do is we'll hand out some, okay? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Let me do that. You know, in the old days, the presidents would sign one letter at a time. That's right. And it looked terrible. <laughs> when you looked at the signature, <laughs> it, it really did look terrible. You have it all set? Yeah. Come on. Greg? Okay, fellas. Give this to Chuck Schumer. <laughs> okay. We're very proud of this bill. Uh, this A lot of work was in when and this has been going on for a long time. And I think particularly 99 to 1 is something that's very special, especially in this day and age. I think we're going to have a lot more of it, especially maybe with infrastructure, but other things also. So uh, thank you all for being here. I very much appreciate it. Mr. President, are you going to meet with Vladimir Putin in Paris in a couple of weeks? Uh, we may. It's being discussed right now. Mike Bolton, as you know, is in Russia uh, talking about various things, including the whole nuclear situation uh, where we were not treated well. For many years. This should have been done a long time ago. And I think something good could come out of that. And I very well meet with uh, — I think we probably will. It hasn't been set up yet, but it probably will be. And Mr. What, President, what would you be the most important thing to think discuss? The, the, could you settle some of the confusion over your comments about what you mean when you say you're a nationalist? What does that mean? I love our country. And our country has taken set, second fiddle. If you look at the trade deals — and nobody knows it better than me — I'm knocking out some of the worst deals I've ever seen, where we're giving all of our wealth, all of our money to other countries, and then they don't treat us properly, where we're protecting other rich countries, very, very rich countries, including, by the way, a country that happens to be very much in the news, Saudi Arabia, immensely wealthy, and we're taking care of their military for a fraction of the cost. Not fair to us. Other countries also, immensely wealthy countries, and we have to get reimbursed for that. We should not be the world's police keeper and not get reimbursed. And by the way, when I bring up to the heads of countries like Japan, Prime Minister Abe, a friend of mine, I bring it up, he looks at me, and he goes, I understand. They understand it. Nobody's ever asked him. Well, I said, have you ever asked? I said, have you ever been asked, like, you have to be, like, help out? Nobody's ever asked. So that's a pretty unfair thing. Well, I'll, I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you. Wait, 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 wait. I'm going to get back to you. If I may it's ask, nice Can I ask my follow-up question? No, now? not now. I'll get back to you, I said. All right. You can't take the whole thing. You have a lot of other very fine Well, no, I understand, but I, Go ahead, yes. Mr. Erdogan. No, I'm, I'm behind you, please. Mr. President, um, have you heard back uh, — or, first of all, can you tell us what you think about what the Turkish president said today? And also, have you heard back? What President Erdogan said? Yes, sir. And uh, well, he was pretty rough him? on Saudi Arabia, I would say. And I haven't gotten a full recap. As you know, uh, I have people in Turkey, and I have people in Saudi Arabia, and other places. And they're all coming back as we speak. They're heading back. Uh, I'll know, I think, everything in a very short period of time. It's a bad situation. 
But uh, certainly, President Erdogan was not complimentary of what happened. That was a terrible thing that happened. Okay? Yes, ma'am. Go ahead. Oh, I was going to ask, do you, do you believe him when he says he believes the Saudi Arabian leadership? I want to see the facts first. Uh, look, Saudi Arabia has been a really great ally. They've been one of the biggest investors, maybe the biggest investor in our country. Uh, they are doing hundreds of billions of dollars worth of investments and, you know, so many jobs, so many jobs, thousands and thousands of jobs. And if you look at the other side, Iran, you look at what they've done to people, vicious, horrible. And that's no excuse for what happened with Saudi Arabia, no excuse whatsoever. But you take a look, it's a rough part of the world. It's a, it's a nasty place. It's a nasty part of the world. But if what happened happened, and if the facts check out, it's something that's very bad. At the same time, they have been a very good ally of ours. They've been helping us a lot with respect to Israel. They've been funding a lot of things. Uh, I will tell you that Russia and China would love to have that military order. I mean, I can say it to my Democrat friends, too. I mean, they would love this is $110 billion worth of military. And Russia would pick that up very quickly, and China would pick it up very quickly, and France would pick it up very quickly. France makes a lot of military equipment. It's a very competitive market. I did a great job when I sold them. That's why I went to Saudi Arabia first. I went to Saudi Arabia on the basis that they would buy hundreds of billions, many billions of dollars worth of things. And the ultimate number is around $450 billion, 110 for military, $450 billion. I think that's over a million jobs, a million to over a million jobs. So we do that, we're just hurting ourselves. We're just hurting ourselves. And I, I know that from a certain standpoint, you could also say, well, it doesn't matter, because it is a terrible thing. But uh, we would be really hurting ourselves. We'd be hurting our companies. We'd be hurting our jobs. And uh, so we'll see what happens. But I should have a pretty good report. A couple of seconds. I should have a pretty good report very soon. Yes, go ahead. Mr. President, just to follow up on your comments about being a nationalist, there is a concern that you are sending coded language or a dog whistle to some Americans out there that what you really mean is that you're a white nationalist. I've never even heard that. I cannot imagine that. You mean, I I say, I'm a nationalist. No, I never heard that theory about being a nationalist. I've heard them all. But I'm somebody that loves our country. When I say a nationalist, I don't like it when Germany's paying 1% of GDP for NATO, and we're paying 4.3%. I don't like that. That's not fair. I don't like it when, as an example, we're protecting uh, Europe, and we're paying for almost the entire cost of NATO. We're paying for a very, very substantial portion, far greater than what it should be. Uh, we have great respect for those countries. But on top of that, I don't like it when they put up barriers to our farmers, where our farmers cannot sell into Europe. They have trade barriers that make it — you guys know it better than anybody. They have trade barriers that are as severe as China's trade barriers, which will be coming down. They want to make a deal very badly. They'll be coming down. But I am very proud of our country. We cannot continue to allow what's happened to our country to continue to happen. We can't let it happen. So I'm proud. I'm proud of our country. And I am a nationalist. It's a word that hasn't been used too much. Some people use it. But I'm very proud. I think it should be brought back. I'm somebody that wants to help other countries of the world. But I also have to take care. We have to take care of our country. We cannot continue to allow ourselves to be duped on military and also duped on trade. With the European Union, as an example, last year on trade, we lost $151 billion. On top of that, we lost hundreds of billions of dollars on protection. So we protect and we get killed. We, we do the trading and they get killed. Can't do it. I want it to be fair. So I want them to open their borders. I want them to make it fair for our farmers, our, our companies, our medical companies. They sell medical equipment. They just put restrictions on a year and a half ago where the medical equipment can't get into Europe, even though it's better than what they have. So they have to treat us well. All I want our country is to be treated well, to be treated with respect. For many years, other countries that are allies of ours 
so-called allies. They have not treated our country fairly. So in that sense, I am absolutely a nationalist, and I'm proud of it. Yes, Mr. Jeff? Mr. President, you said um, this weekend and yesterday that you were planning a tax. Uh, yeah, and we'll do a resolution. Can you it? explain what you mean by a resolution? Well, and can you tell us just broadly how yeah. this is going to work? First of all, if you speak to Kevin Brady and a group of people, we're putting in a tax reduction of 10 percent, which I think will be a net neutral because we're doing other things, which I don't have to explain now, but it'll be pretty much of a net neutral. But it'll be great for the middle class. It's going to be a tax reduction of 10 percent for the middle class. Business will not enter into it. And this will be on top of the tax reduction that the middle class has already gotten. And we're putting in a resolution uh, probably this week. I think you folks know about it. And uh, Kevin Brady's been working on it very hard, really, for a couple of months. We'll put that in. We'll start the work after the uh, sometime after the midterms. Mr. Thank President, you. why the decision now to send two U.S. Navy warships through the Taiwan Strait? Uh, I'll leave that decision to myself and my generals and my admirals. Okay. Not to you. Are you are you worried about any negative reaction from China? I'm not worried about anything. I don't worry about things. Mr. Mr. President, on the tax cut proposal, when you say that you want a middle class tax cut, is that an acknowledgement that the original GOP tax cut was too heavily tilted in favor of no. wealthier Americans and corporations? No, it really wasn't. Why bring it out now? It's right been it's been great. I mean, the tax cut that we had, even if you look at estate taxes and what it's done for the small farmers and for small businesses. If you look at the past, I'm talking about the one that was passed. We're very proud of it. And what it did more than anything else, it brought jobs, tremendous numbers of jobs. That's why our job numbers, you hear it all the time when I speak. I mean, we have the best numbers, literally, we've ever had. African-American unemployment, lowest ever. Asian-American, Hispanic-American, no matter what category you look at. Women, 65 years, lowest in 65 years. A lot of that was done by regulation cutting, and a lot of it was done by the tax plan. Uh, and that all inures, obviously, to the middle class. In addition, they paid less. I mean, they walk away with uh, $2,000, $1,000, $4,000, a lot of money. This is in addition to that. But on this one, we're not going to do any business because we think the business is really very incentivized. On this one, we're doing a pure 10 percent tax cut for the middle class in addition to what they've already gotten in the first time. Shouldn't the middle class have gotten a bigger tax cut to begin Well, with? I didn't think we could get any more than we got. I mean, we got the max. And now, because of the fact that the economy is doing so well, we feel that we can give up some more. I couldn't have gotten that extra 10 percent when, uh, when we originally passed the plan. We maxed out. Now, and we had to take care of jobs. Jobs are very important. We gave the middle class a lot. But we couldn't have — now, as you've obviously seen, business has done so well. We've brought in hundreds of — many hundreds of millions of dollars from offshore because of the tax plan. And that all went to creating Apple, as an example. Uh, I was with them. They're going to be spending $350 billion on building new facilities in the United States, which is something, as you know, from a long time ago. I've been saying it from the beginning. I want Apple to build their plans here. They're going to spend $350 billion. They're bringing in $230 billion offshore because of our tax plan. Uh, now, that helps everybody. That's good for everybody. But this is in addition to the very substantial tax cuts that the middle class has already gotten. So this will be a 10 percent. It's going to be a resolution probably introduced uh, this week, the end of the week, or early next week. And uh, Kevin Brady has been drawing it up, actually, for a while. We've been working on it very hard for a pretty long period of time. Okay? President, yes, said, Jeff, go ahead, finish it. Yeah, with somebody else there. Go, ahead. go ahead. Yes. Mr. President, you said yesterday that you expect the briefing to make a fair firm investigators today on the Saudi case. Is that still the, the case? Or? Well, they're heading back. A couple of them are heading back. Gina, Gina, as an example, went to Turkey. Have you heard anything from there? Uh, I've heard, but I'd rather talk about it when everybody's back here. Okay, so tomorrow you expect that? Uh, I think they'll be back tonight and tomorrow, early tomorrow. Almost all of them. The head of your meetings in Paris with Yes, uh, we have, and Mike Pompeo has, and John Bolton is actually over there now. Uh, we've spoken to many of them. Uh, they are — nobody — nobody likes what happened. Let me put it that way. There's nobody that said, oh, gee, that's wonderful. They're all very angry about it, and they're very upset about it. Nobody more so than me. What do you think it means for the broader relationship going forward, whether or not this bill or whether
Well, it's a good question. And I think what I'm going to be doing is maybe a little bit what I did with respect to the FBI investigations having to do with Justice Kavanaugh when they were asked for more time by the Democrats. I said, look, I'm going to leave it up to the senators that were doing the job. And I think here I'm going to leave it up very much to Congress. Congress has some very strong ideas both, both ways. Uh, I've been told by certain senators we want that investment to keep coming. At the same time, that doesn't mean that that uh, they're not going to do something. There has to be some kind of retribution. There has to be, no matter what you do. I've been told by others that they don't want investment of $450 billion. I think that's foolish. But there are some that feel that. But I'm going to leave it very much, in terms of what we ultimately do, I'm going to leave it very much, in conjunction with me, up to Congress. And that means Congress, both Republicans and Democrats, and one independent. Right. But I'm going to have — I want to have um, the folks in Congress come back and make recommendations to me, because I'd, I'd like that to be a bipartisan recommendation. I think we can get a bipartisan recommendation. I really do, because they feel — I don't think they feel any differently than I do. It's terrible. It's a terrible thing. Mr. President, why do you think something like this could have happened? Do you think that there was a failure of leadership on the world stage, that Saudi Arabia wasn't concerned about the — They had a very bad — original concept. It was carried out poorly, and the cover-up was one of the worst in the history of cover-ups. It's very simple. Bad deal. Should have never been thought of. Somebody really messed up, and they had the worst cover-up ever. And where it should have stopped is at the deal standpoint, when they thought about it. Because whoever thought of that idea, I think, is in big trouble. And they should be in big trouble. Okay? Yes. Anybody else? Mr. President, one more thing on the uh, caravan. You had said that there were Middle Easterners yeah. in the caravan. Can you explain that? Are you saying there are terrorists? Well, there could that very caravan? well be. Yeah, there that could very well be. And if you look at. Uh, Do you know for sure? Uh, I have very good information. I have very good information. Uh, and if you look at what's happened with Honduras and statements made about Honduras and even a phone call that our Vice President had. Uh, today, which I think you can maybe reveal. Do you want to mention that, Mike? Is that okay? Probably. Certainly. Go ahead, please. No, at, at the President's direction, I spoke to uh, President Hernandez of Honduras. He told me that the caravan that's now making its way uh, through Mexico headed for the southern border was organized by leftist organizations and financed uh, by Venezuela. Uh, and uh, we, uh, as, as we've said. And the Democrats, maybe? Uh, and the Democrats? Well, Mr. President, where is the freedom of that? Where, where's the freedom of that? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. President, I know it sounds like you're teasing about that, but where is the proof that Democrats are paying for this caravan? Uh, Why would they pay for a caravan? You know what? Well, you know, you're going to find out, and we're going to see. Well, maybe they made a bad mistake, too. We're going to find out about that. What else did they say, Mike, about ISIS? Did they say something? Well, just that it's, it's been organized by uh, leftist groups. They've made their way north. Once, uh, once they crossed into Guatemala, now crossed into Mexico. There's some estimates north of 7,000 migrants, so the group is growing. Uh, uh, the United States of America intervenes and prevents 10 terrorists or suspected terrorists from coming into our country every day. So it's, it is inconceivable that there would not be individuals uh, from the Middle East as a part of this growing the caravan. And what the President's determined to do is to put the safety and security of the American people first. And I know the President will be addressing this in the coming days about ways we need to close the loopholes that human traffickers and other dangerous individuals used to entice vulnerable families to make the long and dangerous trek north. Mr. Vice President, are you saying that you have evidence that there are terrorists in the caravan right now? What I can say to you is you're saying statistically there's been a number over the years and so on. That's not the same as saying there are terrorists in the caravan. There are a lot of Middle Easterners who live in the United States, Americans of Middle Eastern descent, who find that kind of rhetoric okay, appalling. Let me just say this. Let me just say this. Isn't that true, Mr. President? Let me just say this. Uh, I spoke with Border Patrol this morning, and I spoke to him last evening, and I spoke to him the day before. I speak to him all the time. And they say, and you know this as well as anybody, over the course of the year, over the course of a number of years, they've intercepted many people from the Middle East. 
They've intercepted ISIS. They've intercepted all sorts of people. They've intercepted good ones and bad ones. They've intercepted wonderful people for the Middle East, and they've intercepted bad ones. They've intercepted wonderful people from South America and from other parts further south. They've intercepted a lot of different people. But among the people they've intercepted very recently are people from the Middle East, okay? Uh, so you can't be surprised when you hear it. You've heard that before. It happens all the time. And I spoke to him literally last night. I spoke to another one this morning. Very good relationship with Border Patrol and ICE. And they say it happens all the time from the Middle East. But it's not even saying bad or good, but some real bad ones. But, but no they proof, intercept. No that they're in the caravan well, now. They could very well be. But there's no proof. There's no proof of anything. There's no proof of anything. Uh, but they could very well be. If you look at what that was building, you know, they were talking about five or 6,000 people. I'm pretty good at estimating crowd size, as you probably have figured out. You tend to get it a little bit off the real number. Last night, as an example, that was record-setting stuff, wasn't it, huh? But they don't want to talk about that. But I will tell you, let me just tell you, I that I really, I believe that big, that was pretty big. Yeah. That was pretty impressive by any standard. And these are great people. And, uh, and by the way, your vote, I, we just heard the vote is uh, — and this could be good, bad, or indifferent for Democrats or Republicans, but the amount of voting is at a level that they've never seen before for the midterms. You heard that. I mean, uh, I don't know whether I'm supposed to say that's good or bad, but I will tell you the, the amount of people voting is at a level, Sarah, that uh, — that you've never seen at midterms, a record level by a lot. Uh, so I think I think very I think there's a very good chance, honestly, that that you have uh, people in there. I also think there's a very good chance that over a course of a period of time you have, or they don't have to necessarily be in that group. But certainly you have people coming up through the southern border, from the Middle East and other places that are not appropriate for our country, and I'm not letting them in. They're not coming in. All right, they're not coming in. We're going to do whatever we have to. They're not coming in. And you don't think you're pouncing on this to try to stoke no, not fear or it, it, it cause I, alarm to drive up your I'm face. a very non-political person, and that's why I got elected president. Do you share the assessment about the current that is financed by Venezuela? That you, you said, Mr. Vice President, that the President of Honduras said that because of you share that assessment? President Hernandez, when President Trump asked me to call, I was president of Honduras when this caravan was initiated. He told me that it had been organized by leftist groups in Honduras that were being financed in part by Venezuela and, and, uh, uh, and organized by human traffickers who have no regard for human life, organized by dangerous gang members that are moving people north. When I spoke to President Morales uh, uh, in Guatemala, he informed me that they were already busing people in the, in the caravan back who had been left behind, left by the side of the road, elderly, vulnerable families simply left behind by this caravan. It's, it, people need to understand the people that are driving this caravan north to challenge our sovereignty, to challenge our borders, are, are doing so without any regard for human life uh, and, and doing it to advance uh, some political statement or, in the case of human traffickers, strictly for uh, for, for financial profit. And the President's absolutely determined to use all means at his disposal to organize efforts to, to have Mexico turn this caravan around and, and work with Congress uh, to close the loopholes that human traffickers use every day to entice vulnerable families to make this dangerous trip north. I really think, though, that what this really shows is that we have to change the laws. Right. I say this having two very highly respected Democrat senators behind me, but we have to do something that we all agree with. We have to change the laws. We have to make them much different. Uh, they're very soft, and it's a different time. It's really a different time. Maybe there was a time where that could have been appropriate. But we have to have immigration laws now that are suitable for this time and that work. And the ones that we have now are old, and they don't work. They don't work, and they don't come close to working. And we need protection. We have to have a wall. We've been building the wall. We started the wall. 
San Diego's almost completed the whole area, that whole area of California. But we uh, we want to do it quickly. We don't have to, we don't want to take years to do it. But I, I really believe that, and I think that I don't see anything's uh, that kind of an asset when you look at what's happening. When you look at uh, heartache on both sides, because it really is, it's heartache on both sides. But when you look at 10,000 people, because I don't believe that was 5,000. I think that was much more than 5,000 people. But when you look at that massive group of people on the bridge, when you saw it on the bridge, the group, I really think that it probably spells out to us and Congress, something has to be done. You can't have this happen. Something has to be done. So in that way, I think maybe it's going to be a good thing. We're going to see. We're going to see. We're counting on our military. We'll have to call up our military if we need to. But we can't let this happen. We cannot allow our country to be violated like this. And it's very unfair. People are waiting on line that went through a legal system of immigration. And they've been going through it for many years. And they've worked hard. They've done everything they're supposed to do. And then people just come running across the border. It's really unfair to the millions of people that are waiting on line to come in legally into our country. It's very unfair. Yeah, go ahead, Jim. Do you see any argument, Mr. President, for trying to improve conditions in those countries by not decreasing aid, but perhaps maintaining I or increasing aid? I've heard that aid? argument before, but it hasn't worked for a long time in those countries. I want to improve the conditions in our country. I want to improve the conditions here. Now, part of that condition and improving the condition is we are doing so well. So many companies are coming in. I spoke with uh, Prime Minister Abe very recently, and he informed me that we have five major car companies coming back. I said, you have to do something. You have to balance it out, because it's like a one-way street. The trade imbalances are so different between, as an example, Japan, just one, Japan and the United States. Uh, we have Foxconn coming in. They make the phones for, for Apple. Uh, they do a lot of work for Apple. They do a lot of work for everybody. They're coming — they're opening up in Wisconsin. But we have a lot of companies coming in. We need — at 3.7 — it's the lowest in many years, many decades. We need great people coming in. I want great people to come in. I want them to come in through the merit system. I look at the people that we're talking about. I, I really watch pretty carefully all of the networks, I have to be honest with you, all of them. And you, and you have even CNN. <laughs> you did? Yeah, you had some beautiful shots of some very good people. And <laughs> I really think that those — some of those people, a lot of those people — I think there's a lot of talent in that — that group. There's a lot of talent. We need people, because I have companies coming into the United States. They have to be able to get workers. And our great, even conservative people that maybe three, four years ago would have felt differently about it, they now feel. We have to get people to operate these big plants and factories that are opening in the United States. I want them to come in. I want them to come in through a merit-based system. And I think a lot of people are going to be happy with that. I want to build our country. I don't want to go to other countries to rebuild. That's what we've done. We've been trying to rebuild the world and police the world. It's now time to rebuild the United States and to properly police the United States. And that's what we're going to do. At the same time, we're going to help other countries all over the world. But we have to focus on our country for a change. And that's what we're going to do, okay? Thank you all very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. much.